Welcome and hello. This is a video tutorial on HEC HMS. And in this lesson, I'm going to be discussing meteorologic models, specifically the evapotranspiration methods. All right, so what I have on the screen here is my HMS. I have a watershed that's been delineated into a few different sub basins. As you can see here, they're all part of this basin one with basins, reaches, junctions, and a sink. And below that, you can see I have a meteorological model. I called it MET1. And then what we're going to be doing in this lesson is exploring the evapotranspiration methods in this drop down right here. There are about 12 different methods. So this is going to be part one. In this lesson, we're going to be just covering the annual evapotranspiration method, monthly average method, Hamann, gridded Hamann, Hargreaves, and gridded Hargreaves methods. So that's, uh, that's about half of the methods, and then we'll have a part two where we cover the others. Evapotranspiration is the process of water returning from the land surface to the atmosphere, either by evaporation from the ground surface and also from transpiration from vegetation. The meteorological model calculates the potential evapotranspiration or the theoretical evapotranspiration, but it's only at the subbasin model level where the actual evapotranspiration is calculated. As you can see here, we have our list of evapotranspiration methods, and I'd like to draw your attention to the fact that some of them have the prefix of gridded, gridded Hamann, gridded Hargreaves, and so on. This simply means the same method is applied, Hamann versus gridded Hamann, except that the equations for these gridded methods are applied to each grid cell using separate boundary conditions instead of an area averaged values over the entire subbasin. It's also worth mentioning that the user's manual says these evapotranspiration methods are only required and only necessary when the following loss rate methods are used at the subbasin level. So here's the subbasin. I'll click on that. Here's the loss method referring to infiltration and the different loss methods that require evapotranspiration to be used in the meteorologic model is deficit and constant. So that's the first one gridded deficit and constant, soil moisture accounting, that's the last one here, and gridded soil moisture accounting, this one here. Okay, well, let's go back and get started here. I'm going to click meteorological model, MET1, and then for evapotranspiration, the first one up is annual evapotranspiration. That's this one right here. In the Watershed Explorer, let me collapse that, we have an icon now for annual evapotranspiration. So if I click that, we now have a table here for our parameters which lists out each of the sub basins. I have five sub basins here in the basin model. And we need to provide a value for inches per day. This is the rate of the evapotranspiration. This is a required field and percent pattern is an optional field. If we do not use percent pattern, then the user's manual says the rate that we enter for evapotranspiration should just be the average rate in inches per day. So I'm going to go ahead and just type in some numbers here like 0. To one. So those are some numbers. If the pattern is provided in this right column for percent patterns, then the rate entered over here in this first column, inches per day, should be the largest evapotranspiration occurring during the simulation for that subbasin. So what's going to happen is the actual evapotranspiration is going to be the rate we enter times a percentage based on that uh, paired data set we're going to create, which would be between zero and 100%. So let's go ahead and do that as an example, create some paired data sets representing these percent patterns. I'm going to go up to the components menu, paired data manager, and then for my type, I'm going to select percent patterns. Now there's this percentage curves right here. That's not the one you want. Keep scrolling down and then percentage percent patterns is the one we want. Click new and then give it a name and create. I'm going to create a few more while I'm here. So that was number one. That's number two. And then new. I'll make one for subbasin three, and I think that kind of gets the point across. So now I should be able to select one, and there's two, three, and so, okay, so you, you get the idea. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at that data itself. Of course, we just created it, so there's nothing there yet. So if I select, say, uh, ET2, right now I have manual entry selected, in which case I would just go ahead and provide a table here representing the day of the month, month, comma, space, hour, colon, minute, and that would just repeat year after year after year in the event your simulation goes multiple years, probably not. 
and then um, the percentage here, which would range between zero and 100%. So I'm going to go ahead and just plug in some numbers as an example, paste. So I pasted in some numbers here. I'm just using the first hour of each month. And then, uh, then the second column, the percentage ranges up to 100%. So if I click the graph here, you can get a quick visual on what that data is. And you can tell that it's a linear interpolation, it looks like, between data points in the table. All right, let me go ahead and go to pattern three, just as a second example. Say, for instance, I'm running a simulation that only covers March 1st, so a, a one-day simulation. In which case, I would just start up March 1st, 0, 0,100 hours, and end on March 2nd, 0, 0,100 hours, ending and beginning both at 60%. So it, the graph would just look like this because the range is for the entire year. Probably not as helpful or intuitive, but um, you know that's what I might be using for my data. All right, so once our patterns are all defined, then we can go back to our meteorologic model for MET1, and then uh, those would all be in place if I had saved it. The next method for evapotranspiration, which I sometimes call ET, evapotranspiration, it's just easier to say, it's going to be the monthly average option. So let me go ahead and find that. This is alphabetical in this order, so it helps you find what you're looking for. All right, so when I select monthly average, I notice up here in the Watershed Explorer that now we have parameter data at the sub-basin level. We don't have a model-wide parameter to input. So monthly average, and then what we need to do is input the rate and coefficient. Both these terms are required for each month of the year. And remember, this is only for sub-basin one. So we'd have to repeat this process for all of our sub-basins. The user's manual provides a map for e evaporation rates. This first column here is actually evaporation per month, not evapotranspiration. So I'm going to bring up that plot, and here it is from the NOAA website. So what you're seeing here is actually millimeters evaporation. And then based on the scale from white to dark green, you can get an idea of what the millimeters per month is based on the continental United States. So if your watershed is somewhere else, then I'm sure there's maps similar to that. But just wanted to give this uh, as a reference point for folks whose watersheds are in this location. If I hover over the different months across the top or just click, you can see that the evapotranspiration increases until like the middle of summer. June and July seems to be the most here. And also the scale at the bottom is changing a little bit. And then August, September, it gets uh, less ET throughout the year. OK, so let's go back to HMS. I'm just going to paste in some numbers here. So this is after converting from millimeters to inches. And then a coefficient value, the user's manual uses 0 0.7. And uh, this coefficient is multiplied by the evaporation rate to reflect plant water use. Let's go back to our meteorologic model. And then for evapotranspiration, let's select the Hamen and gridded Hamen. So here's Hamen right here. And keep in mind, there's also the gridded Hamen for um, for those who want to use the gridded method. So if I click on Hamen, for instance, this is where I'm supposed to be providing the Hamen coefficient right here. But if I went back and I selected gridded Hamen, then I just have a single coefficient right here, which would count for the entire model, not specific to each subbasin. And the same is true with Hargreaves once we get there. But let me just, um, let me go with Hamen first, just the normal Hamen. Using the Hamann method, the daily average temperature is the only data required. So for instance, if you have no idea what evaporation or evapotranspiration or any of the other parameters are that are required for some of the other evapotranspiration methods, and all you have is temperature, then the Hamann method may be the best method for you to go with. When using the Hamann method, a temperature must be selected for the meteorologic model, which is this right here. Because as you'll see in the equation for ET using Hamann, uh, temperature is required. In fact, let's go ahead and bring that up right now. Oops, that's hard greaves. Here's Hamann. Evapotranspiration equals the coefficient times N times P, where, C, where the coefficient is the value that we just had on the screen here. So if I go to, say, subbasin 1, Hamann, that's this coefficient here in inches per gram per meter squared or cubed. I'm not a big fan of mixing. Um, inches and meters since they're different systems, but uh, that's what it is. This is the default value, 0 0.0065. So without particularly strong knowledge of what's going on here, I'm just going to leave that coefficient as is. And then uh, the n value here represents the number of 
hours of daylight. And I believe this is per day based on a plot below. I'll show you what that is in just a moment. And then P sub T is the saturated water vapor density at the mean daily temperature. So this is why that temperature method is required because we need to calculate this saturated water vapor density. Sorry, I don't have units for this equation. I'm guessing it is in metric though because of the 273. And this is uh, the P sub T calculation based on temperature to be used in the evapotranspiration equation up here. Okay, back to that number of hours of daylight right here. You can use an equation, but the technical reference manual has this plot here, which basically shows the 12 months of the year across the horizontal axis, and then the number of daylight hours in the vertical axis here, N, and then that's also based on your location of Earth. So if you're like 30 degrees south, north, 40 degrees north latitude, just go ahead and follow your line and then figure out your N value. So that is how Hamann works. It's going to be more evapotranspiration at higher temperatures. Okay, so let's go back and go to Hargreaves and gridded Hargreaves. So meteorological model. And then next is Hargreaves, where we have a coefficient we need to define at the sub-basin level here, and just sort of like Hamann. And if we use gridded Hargreaves here, then we would define the coefficient at the model level. Let's go back to Hargreaves there. And then so for basin one, for instance, here's our coefficient, one over degree Fahrenheit. This is the default value, 0.0075. If you're using metric units, it's in Celsius and it's a different number, but I'm just going to leave that number as it is. The Hargreaves method estimates evapotranspiration using reference ET values based on the shortwave radiation, that's the solar radiation, and the temperature. So we must use a shortwave radiation method and a temperature method here. So here's shortwave radiation, and then here's the temperature method, just as before. This is often paired with the Hargreaves shortwave radiation method. So for instance, that is right here. And if I do that, there's a separate coefficient for Hargreaves. So let me bring up the equation. This equation came from the HMS technical user's manual. And what we have is the evapotranspiration equals K coefficient times solar radiation times uh, the, T, the quantity T plus 17.78, where the T is the mean daily temperature. You can read the equation. And I'll also leave a link to the Hargreaves discussion in the technical reference manual in the description of this video as well. So this K coefficient here represents the evapotranspiration coefficient. And then when calculating this solar radiation term, RS, down here, this K coefficient, K sub RS, refers to the coefficient for Hargreaves in the solar radiation method. So let me go back to, yeah, so this right here is going to be our K coefficient sub RS, and then this coefficient right here would be the first K coefficient we saw right here. Uh, also, if you want to combine the terms all together, this is what it looks like. Well, that was it for our discussion on the different evapotranspiration methods. This is part one. We covered six of the 12 methods. We covered the annual evapotranspiration, monthly average, Hamann, gridded Hamann, Hargreaves, and gridded Hargreaves methods.